What's going on guys? Welcome to another video brought to you by The Simple Engineer. Um, today we are going to be continuing with Programming and Prologue Part 4 and I'm going to delve into e the introduction for pairs and lists. So pairs and lists is a great way to manipulate and store certain data, especially for recursive functions, which we're going to touch on in this video, but probably have a video of itself in part five to touch on recursion. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to pull up my text editor and compiler that I said I recommended. Um, the link for this will be in the description. And we'll go ahead and show you a basic structure for a list. So a, a list would look like we have a, an open bracket here and we would start filling it with elements uh, or data. So we could have Rob, John, Lisa, um, Connor. Okay, so we would have we would have sets of data here. Uh, we could also have something like Josh, Jake, and then we could throw in like a fact, like eat and cheese, and then end it. So you start to see that a list can just contain these these different elements. Now it follows this basic structure that the first element in the list is the head and then we logically denote the separation between the head and the rest of the list by this vertical bar and then the remainder of the items are the tail and then we would end it. So this is the structure. We have the first item. Okay, so we have the first item and then the tail is the second item. Okay, so we'll go ahead and query a couple examples to show you how this works. So say we want to print out the first and remainder items of the list. So we're going to print out the head and we're going to print out the tail. And this list for what we want to print is going to equal, we have say Josh, we have Jake, and we have the fact eat cheese. Okay, and we'll end it. So the head should print out Josh and the tail should print out Jake and eat cheese which it does. Perfect. Okay, so uh, something to note or remember is that only non-empty lists can have a head and a tail. Because if I have the empty set, you can't assign a head to nothing and a tail to nothing. So we'll go ahead and run this and you get false because it's impossible. So let's have a let's do a, a little trickier example and say that we want to print out the first two elements of the list and then the remainder. So if we want to start doing questions like this, then we just need to tell the list where to logically denote the separation of elements. So we'll do an example. So say we want to print out the first two elements first. I would go print out X, print out Y, and then I'm going to denote the vertical bar with the rest of the list. And this is going to be the equivalent to a new list. Let's say we have the empty set. We have Ryan in the list, we have John in the list, and we have the function eat and cheese in the list, and we'll end it. So this should print out the first item, which is the empty list. We have Ryan, and then we'll print out the remainder. So we have the first item, X, is the empty list. The second item, Y, is Ryan, and then the remainder is whatever the remainder is, which in this case is John, and then the rule or fact, eat cheese. Okay, perfect. Okay, so now let's get into something that is a little more trickier that deals with nested lists and pairs. Okay, so we remember in the first um, tutorial or example that we dealt with anonymous or don't care variables, which are basically a placeholder to say that we don't care about this portion. However, we need to fulfill the arity of the parameters. So let's go ahead and see an example of what I'm saying. So we're going to construct uh, what we want to print out in some list. And this list is denoted by, uh, we don't care about the first element. We don't care about the second element. And the third element is going to be a nested list. And in that nested list, we don't care about the head of it. And then we do care about the tail of the nested list. And then for the first list, we don't care about the tail of that. And then we'll end it. And this is going to equal, open bracket, uh, we'll throw in an empty list in here. We'll throw in a fact. And these are just going to be randomly placed elements. And then to follow the structure of the initial um, constructor here is we're going to say there's a nested list. 
and the head is two, and we'll throw in another nested list within that nested list of b comma c, and it. We'll add an empty list element again. We'll add a z, and let's go ahead for fun and throw in another nested list. So we'll say b comma c, and we'll end that and end that. Okay, so without even running this or querying the fact, let's uh, see what it would pronounce. So we're saying we don't care about the very first item, which would be two, or sorry, the empty list. We don't care about the second element, which would refer to dead of Z. However, the third element, which happens to be this nested list, we want to take the tail of this nested list. That's what we care about. So if we go in this nested list, we see the tail is this B comma C. It's the remainder of this nested list happens to be the element of B comma C. Okay, so we want to print that. And then this is denoted by whatever the tail is of the first list, the big list, which in this case would be the empty list Z and then this nested list here. But we don't care about that. We just want the tail of this first nested list. So this argument should print out the list of BC, which it does. X equals BC. So you see that it follows this very basic uh, structure. Okay, so using this idea of, of lists and pairs and anonymous variables, we're going to start looking at the member function in Prolog. And what that does is you basically have a, a built-in library called member, and you ask, is this member does this member exist within some list or some pair? So we'll go ahead and take a look here at what that looks like. So to query that, we would say, okay, so we have member, and we want to know, does this member X exist within the head or tail of some list? And if it does, either return the variable that we're asking or return true if all the parameters are filled. And this is actually a function that is defined in a recursive manner. And I know that we haven't gotten too um, extensive into the idea of recursive functions, but um, in this case of member, we'll take a look and explain how it's actually carried out. So member is defined in recursive functions. You have the first type or first rule that's fulfilled or the stopping condition. So we would say, X is a member of the list um, X or T. So this would return true. So we're saying that whatever this is, is a member if X is the head of this list. So if X is in the head of this list, then return true. If not, then we're going to call member X in some list of head and tail. Okay. And we'll call this a rule and we'll call member x of t period. So we'll take a more in-depth look here. So it's saying is member x the first element in this list? If it is, then it'll stop here and return true. That's what this stopping condition is. If it's not, then we're going to create a rule and we'll have the member x and then we'll pass in some list with a head there exists a head and there exists a tail and it's going to call itself it's going to call this rule in itself and it's going to recursively repeat but it's going to pass in x so the parameter of x is going to stay the same but then it's going to pass in the tail so it's basically going to iterate over whatever the first element is and pass it through so if you have some list of one two, three, and four, and you iterate through this, it's saying that, okay, is, and then say our uh, X parameter is three. So we want to know, is three a member of this list? Okay, well, three is not the head. So it's going to pass in two, three, four as the list now, because we're passing in the tail, and we know the tail of this list, one, two, three, four, is going to be two, three, four. So this one goes away. But now two is the head of this list and the tail is three, four. And is three 
the head here is does three equal two well no it doesn't so we're going to iterate so two is going to go away and then we're going to have three as the head of the list and four is now the tail so is three which is our x equal to three yes it is and then it's going to satisfy this stopping condition that x is the head of this list here and it's going to stop and return true okay so let's go ahead and do an example I know this is a lot to take in and recursive structures can be a little confusing but we'll go ahead and try to ease the confusion so if I want to ask if Jan is in the list of Jan Josh and Judy and I can actually I don't need a period there I need a comma this should return true because we know that Jan is the head right there Jan equals the head so true now if we want to know we want to know if Troy is a member of Josh Jan and Troy then this would return false because Troy is not in the head of the list however because it's recursively defined it's built in to be recursively defined like we showed it's going to iterate through this list just like the example we showed so no it does not Troy does not equal Josh but it's going to iterate through and see no Troy does not equal Jan but then eventually Troy is going to be in the head of the list and equal itself and satisfy that stopping condition that the X parameter or this first parameter Troy equals the head of the list okay so if I go member Troy is in the list of Josh Jan Judy this would return false because even through the recursive call Troy will never ever exist as the head of the list because it doesn't even exist as an element in the list in the first place so it would be false okay so now um, we looked at some list manipulation and testing we are going to delve into kind of a more advanced idea that satisfies some constraints okay some constraints so let's say that we want to call we want to know if X is a member of the list let's say we have 23 25 67 12 25 19 9 and 6 okay so this is a list and Y is whatever X squared is and Y is less than 400 so we want to print out every member in the list where y is x squared but x squared is less than 400 and we have a syntax error so let's go ahead and see if we can correct what that would be don't need that parenthesis okay so and I'll go ahead and print out all the possible elements so x would be 12 and 12 squared is 144 so as you see it's going to take all the elements and square them and return and print out the values as long as they're less than 400 so that's finding the elements of a list that satisfy some predefined constraint and our predefined constraint in this situation is y is x times x and that value of y is less than 400 okay so I hope that makes sense um, let's do uh, one more one more example here and it's going to be uh, dealing with uh, an actual applicative situation so let's say we want to build some change machine and this change machine is going to return change for a dollar okay so the simple this prologue program is going to check or generate change adding up to a dollar and it's going to consist of half dollars which is 50 cents quarters 25 cents dimes 10 cents nickels um, five cents and pennies one cent okay so we'll define a rule here called change and it's going to have half dollars quarters dimes nickels and pennies and we'll denote it by the following letters and 
we're going to make sure that uh, the change gets returned and half dollar H is a member of 0, 1, and 2 because um, a half dollar can be up to 2 because 50 times 2 is 100 and you don't want to go over a dollar because this is returning change for a dollar. And we'll say member of quarter can be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 because 25 times 4 is 100 so we don't want to exceed that. Then we could say member for a dime would be 0 through 10. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then 10. And then our final member will be, sorry, not our final member, our next member will be nickels. And this would go up all the way to 20. And I'll just go ahead and copy and paste some values in here to save a little bit of time. So this would go up to to 20. And then our final possible currency would be a penny. And this, um, this would, uh, actually, we're not going to include this. We're going to throw in a, a fact down here to actually save time here. So we'll say that S is, and you know from the previous tutorial that assignments are delineated by is. So S is 50 cents for each half dollar plus 25 cents for each quarter plus 10 cents for each dime plus 5 cents for each nickel and under the condition that S is less than or equal to 100 which would be 100 cents which is equal to a dollar and then the amount of pennies is 100 minus whatever S is. And that'll tell us the amount of pennies or the change due. Okay, so pennies will equal the remaining change due. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, query some possible outputs. So let's say change. So we want to know how many half dollars can we get if there are zero quarters, zero dimes, zero nickels, and zero pennies. And we'll hit enter. And this should output two because there's two possible half dollars for the change of a dollar. Okay, we need to add a uh, period at the end of this or else it won't know how to end here. Okay, so now we get two. So there's two possible combinations and nothing else because that's the only change amount that would satisfy. Now, let's say I change half dollar to zero and say pennies to let's say pennies to one, so I have one penny, so it should return false. Okay, and sorry, if I have pennies, how many pennies can I get in change for a dollar? Well, a hundred, because there's a hundred cents and a dollar. But if we wanna do some multiple tests here, we can say if I have, say, three quarters, or three, let's say, yeah, let's say I have three quarters, then how many pennies can I get in return? Well, you know, three quarters is 75 cents. So logistically, pennies should be 25 because that's the remaining change to add up to equal a dollar. So I think you get the point. Um, this is how we're manipulating data based on member under certain constraints of a list and a variable. Okay, so this extends the idea of rules, members, and certain constraints to return some data. So I hope that helps you understand lists a little bit more. If you have any questions, um, feel free to leave a comment or send me a message. Um, and I hope to see you guys in the next video.